There's a secret battle happening in every healthy garden. It's not between plants or pests but deep underground where the real workers of the soil are at play, earthworms. Every gardener knows that worms are the backbone of fertile soil. They aerate, enrich, and transform lifeless dirt into black, crumbly earth that breathes with life. But here's the catch. Worms don't just appear. They follow food, moisture, and shelter. The question that many gardeners ask is, what really brings worms running faster? Some swear by tossing in fruit scraps, others by dumping coffee grounds, while another group quietly insists that cardboard is the real champion. We wanted an answer, so we ran a side-by-side -side test, rotten fruit versus coffee grounds versus cardboard. Which one really pulls worms in and which one falls flat? Stay with me because the results will change how you feed your soil forever. Before diving into the test, it's important to understand why baiting worms even matters. Worms don't just show up randomly. They're drawn by specific signals in the soil. Sugars, nitrogen, cellulose, and moisture all act like different dinner invitations. By choosing the right food, a gardener can quickly boost worm numbers in one spot, speeding up soil recovery and composting. The goal here wasn't just to find which material worms like, but to see which one transforms soil the fastest. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about having worms. It's about having worms working in your favor to break down waste into humus, create channels for roots, and kickstart the microbial party beneath the surface. The first bait in this test was rotten fruit, soft, sugary scraps that most gardeners have on hand. Rotting apples, banana peels, and melon rinds break down fast, releasing sugars and acids into the soil. Within hours, fruit becomes a microbial hotspot, swarming with bacteria and fungi. Worms sense this activity and quickly move in, drawn by the combination of moisture and easy-to-digest matter. But fruit comes with drawbacks. It disappears fast, often within a few days, especially in warm conditions. That means the worms get a quick feast but not a long-term food supply. Worse, rotting fruit can attract pests, fruit flies above ground, ants, and even rodents if left unchecked. In the experiment, worms rushed to the fruit patch first, clustering in high numbers early on, but as soon as the sugars were gone, their numbers began to drop. Rotten fruit is excellent for a quick boost, especially if you're trying to wake up a tired patch of soil or kickstart a worm bin. But it's not sustainable bait on its own. It's more like a dessert, fast energy, gone in a flash. Next came coffee grounds. Gardeners love them for their texture, dark color, and reputation as a soil amendment. Worms do indeed eat coffee grounds, but the key here is patience. Unlike fruit, coffee grounds don't break down overnight. Their structure is tougher and microbes take longer to colonize them. That means worms don't rush in immediately. In fact, during the first days of the test, very few worms gathered in the coffee patch compared to the fruit. But then something interesting happened. After about two weeks, as the grounds mellowed, microbial life flourished and the worms returned in steady numbers. Coffee grounds didn't provide the explosive rush that fruit did, but they delivered consistency. Worms hung around longer, and the soil structure improved as the grounds mixed into the earth. The added bonus was that coffee didn't attract pests in the same way fruit did. No flies, no rodents, just a gradual humus-building effect. Coffee grounds proved to be the slow burner of the group. They don't win the race for instant attraction, but they win in the long game. They keep worms working steadily, building a dark, rich soil profile without the drama. Finally came the dark horse of the experiment, plain brown cardboard. At first glance, it doesn't look like food at all. But to worms, cardboard is more than a meal. It's bedding, moisture holder, and a long-lasting food source. Cardboard is made of cellulose, which is actually the same basic plant fiber that worms naturally consume in fallen leaves and roots. When it's buried under compost, it stays moist and, over time, slowly softens as fungi and bacteria start to colonize it. In the test, worms didn't rush to the cardboard like they did with fruit. It wasn't flashy. But once the cardboard softened, worms didn't just nibble. They actually moved in. 
The cardboard acted like both food and shelter, creating a perfect environment where they could feed in safety. And, you know, unlike fruit, which vanishes fast, or coffee, which takes time to become palatable, cardboard really struck a balance. It lasted for weeks, keeping worms in one spot far longer than either fruit or coffee. The result was a patch of soil teeming with castings, aerated tunnels, and just a ton of sustained worm activity. Ah, cardboard! It proved itself not just as food, but as a foundation for a worm-rich ecosystem. Who would have thought, right? It really sets the stage for a thriving environment down there. So, after running the experiment, here's what became clear. Rotten fruit, well, it wins for speed. It's like the worm equivalent of ringing a dinner bell, you know? On the other hand, coffee grounds take the prize for steady long-term feeding. They might not attract worms immediately, but they sure keep them working without interruption. Now, cardboard, however, emerged as the overall champion. It doesn't just feed worms, it houses them. It turns the soil into a permanent worm refuge, which means ongoing castings, steady decomposition, and lasting fertility. Pretty impressive if you ask me. The truth is, each bait has its role. If you want an instant surge of worm activity, fruit is unmatched. If you're after a subtle, pest-free food source, coffee is reliable. But, if you want to truly transform a patch of soil and build lasting fertility, cardboard takes the crown. In fact, combining all three proved the ultimate trick. Fruit for a fast draw, coffee for steady fuel, and cardboard for the permanent base that keeps worms working long after the feast is over. If you're trying this in your own garden, placement matters. Bury fruit scraps about 6 inches deep to avoid pests, while still letting worms find them quickly. Spread coffee grounds thinly, and mix them with other organic matter so they don't clump and go anaerobic. For cardboard, you'll want to peel away any glossy coatings or tape, soak it in water, and then bury it beneath a layer of compost or soil. This helps keep it moist and, you know, makes it easily accessible for worms. When used together, these three materials don't just attract worms. They actually create a full habitat. Think of it as fast food, steady fuel, and permanent housing, all in one spot. And once worms settle in, they'll reward you with the richest fertilizer on earth, castings full of plant-ready nutrients. Worm baiting isn't just about having more worms, it's about transforming soil faster. Dead, compacted ground becomes alive when worms move in. They create air channels, improve water flow, and break down organic matter into humus. Every worm casting contains a balanced blend of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and micronutrients, all wrapped in a form plants can absorb immediately. The right bait doesn't just bring worms, it accelerates the entire soil food web, pulling bacteria, fungi, and other decomposers into harmony. This is why gardeners who learn to bait and keep worms don't just grow plants, they grow systems. Living soil systems that sustain themselves year after year, needing less fertilizer and less intervention. So, when it comes to the battle of rotten fruit coffee grounds and cardboard, the real answer is not about picking one, but about understanding how each works. Fruit calls worms, fast coffee fuels them steady, and cardboard builds them a home. Together, they're pretty much unstoppable. If you're serious about turning dead soil into thriving soil, give this a try in your own garden. Watch the ground come alive with worms and see how fast your plants respond. And if you found this guide valuable, don't forget to subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this with fellow gardeners. The more people who learn to build living soil, the more we can restore the land, one patch at a time.